Hi, I'm Mark Vargo, and welcome to an informative new series where I'll share with you everything I know about film and photography from my perspective as a cinematographer. We have a lot to cover, and some of it's technical. Here's my philosophy. You can't unleash your creative potential until you're technically proficient with photographic concepts. Today, we'll start outside with a review of how to meter and expose for the best of light and the worst of light. So welcome everyone, and I hope you enjoy A Tale of Two Meters. This is an incident meter, and it reads light falling on the dome. You hold this meter in front of the subject and point the spherical dome toward the camera. A reflective or spot meter reads the light reflected off of the subject and requires an understanding of the zone system to determine an f-stop. A spot meter wants to put everything it reads at zone 5 or neutral gray. First thing we'll do is shrink the grayscale into three panels seen here as black, gray, and white. And then we'll take an incident reading. That reading gives us an F11. Next, we'll make a spot reading on the neutral gray card. In theory, that should give us an identical reading as the incident meter. And it does. F11. Remember, and this is key, this situation gives us readings that coincide. And in fact, this is how I verify that my meters are calibrated correctly to one another. Let's take a spot reading on the black card now. Five, six. That's two stops open from the gray card reading. Why? Because the spot meter gives F numbers that make everything it sees Neutral gray. Can black turn neutral gray? At 5.6 it can. A reflective reading on the white card gives us an F22. That's two stops closed down from the gray card reading. This must mean that the white card will turn gray if photographed at 22. Can white turn neutral gray? Now we know a spot meter sees the world as neutral gray. Because of that, if you spot meter snow and don't want it to turn out neutral gray, open up at least three stops from your reading. Compensating for a black cat means you'll have to go in the other direction. You'll need to close down at least three stops. Welcome to the zone system. Determining proper exposure is a critical part of our job as cinematographers. Choosing an f-stop is a two-part evaluative process. It's technical and creative. On the technical side, there are three factors required for determining an exposure setting. The ISO, that's the sensor or emulsion sensitivity. The shutter speed, which is dictated by the frame rate of the camera and the f-stop, which is the number that refers to a given diameter of the aperture in a lens. For now, we'll use 24 frames per second at 180 degree shutter. So at that frame rate and shutter angle, what's the shutter speed? Here's how to calculate the shutter speed. It's a pretty simple calculation where you take the frame rate times 360 divided by the shutter angle. Our standard sound speed frame rate is 24, so let's use that. And a standard shutter in most cameras is 180. 8640 over 180 equals a 48th of a second. That's your shutter speed. Let's head outside and take some readings. Unless the script calls for it, there's nothing more visually unattractive than shooting on an overcast day. The lighting is flat and the vistas are colorless. 
Unlike a sunny day, an overcast day gives you a consistent exposure in every direction because the light is universally from above. This is called top light, and be aware that excessive top light can affect an incident reading. On days like this, I'll shield the top of the meter to cut the top light, and that allows an unbiased reading of the light hitting the face of the dome, and therefore, the face of the subject. This will protect you from underexposing the image by as much as one f-stop. I prefer a spot meter for this lighting environment to minimize the influence of the dominant top light. If you don't have a spot meter, buy a flat disc for your incident meter. This will reduce the top light without having to shield the dome. Four different ways to meter an overcast day and four different results. I checked the histograms and the unshielded reading was indeed one stop underexposed, the shielded version a little bit overexposed. The flat disc and spot readings yielded excellent exposures. And if the forecast calls for it to clear off by midday, try and shoot all your wide shots first and then when it becomes sunny, make shade for the coverage. Reduce the ISO on your meter for sunny conditions, discussed in our next section. A sunny day will give you dramatically different readings depending on where the camera is pointed relative to the sun. I find that an incident meter with the dome attachment works best on sunny days. The illuminated dome gives you the truest angle of where the sun is relative to the subject. Day exterior readings are pretty straightforward, and in most situations I'll go with the displayed F number while shooting wide exteriors. You can use an incident meter for backlight readings, but in my experience, a spot meter is a better tool for a precise exposure that protects delicate density values. Values that could be unprintable or possibly lost entirely if improperly exposed while using a digital camera system. Metering is an interpretive process more forgiving in the day, but beware, far less so at night where there isn't as much latitude for printing. We'll talk about how to light actors for day exterior in our next episode. Filming actors outside requires extra crew, grip, and lighting equipment to manage and keep the look consistent throughout the day. Actors add a whole different level of complexity to the photographic process and in turn dictate how you manage your valuable shooting time. I primarily use a spot meter now, and not just because I'm comfortable with the zone system. Certain photographic events aren't measurable with an incident meter. For example, when the subject is very far away. In this case, aerial photography. Explosions. Blue screen and green screen photography where you must balance the reflected screen value to the foreground subject's nominal exposure. How about smoke? Moon rises. Monitors. Underwater work. And don't forget sunsets. These examples all require a reflected reading. Oh, by the way, we'll talk about filters one day, but for now, if you use them, don't forget to adjust your ISO for their absorption factor. And finally, 
I'm a big fan of testing. Test, test, and test some more. It's time well spent, you'll work more efficiently, and you'll arrive on set with a lot more confidence. I hope you can apply some of the tips from the video. They sure have helped me in my career. Well, that's it from Big Sky Country. Adios for now. I'm Mark Varga. Thank <laughs> you.